Hello there, I'm Mount Payne 27 and this is Dean of Doom, the show where we give grades to classic and contemporary Doom wants. Why? Because ranking things is fun. Today's episode will be dedicated to Machete, a Boom-compatible megawad released in 2023 by A2 Rob. If you're familiar with Nano Remo, short for National Novel Writing Month, there's a Doom equivalent called Nano Wadmo an annual October event intended to catalyze creation of wads, specifically megawads. Machete was born during Nano Wadmo 2022, filled out and polished by year's end, and shipped in January, making its gestation period significantly shorter than Rob's other solo projects despite containing more levels. Prior to this release, A2 Rob was best known for his Running Late series, whose second entry nabbed a Macaque Award in 2020. A loyal disciple of Eric Alm and Vanguard-era Skillsaw, A2 Rob bases his ricocheting combat and economic economical layouts on the works of his great mentors, but he's patented a slick, urban industrial aesthetic all his own, pedals puns with the best of them, and occasionally infuses his maps with dry visual humor. Running Late 2 is more ornate, but Machete's loose, improvisational gameplay and rapid-fire delivery attract me more. Seeing as it's Scythe's 20th anniversary, the time seems right to Dean of Doom it. So here's how the show works. Every map gets one grade for quality and one for difficulty. Quality grades go from A to F. Grade A levels are fun, memorable, visually distinctive, creative, and a fair challenge. We grade difficulty from X to E. X for extreme, E for easy, A through D in between. Keep in mind, my idea of a great map is probably not the same as yours, but that's okay. Disagreeing is part of the fun, after all. At the end of the day, this show is about spreading the joy of doom. So let's do so. Before we start, the rules are we play on ultraviolence, or in this case, hard, and must pistol start each level. I need to play the wad twice before reviewing it, saves are allowed, and we go for 100% kills in all levels, making exceptions when it's just not worth it. I play on Z-Doom, and today's compatibility is Boom. Now, to the wad. Map 1, Forward Expired. Like Scythe's opener, Forward Expired is built out of brick and best experienced at top speed, but A2 Rob has no love for the pistol or chainsaw. Thank God. There's a secret chain gun behind this wall if you really want to make the demons look bad, and if you need a bit of friendly encouragement, use the red key pedestal to hop outside. This is a solid opener and a superb recycling of Hell Revealed 2's kingly Map 1 MIDI. Grade B, Difficulty E. Map 2, Knuckle Sandwich. Expect plenty of parallels to Scythe in this episode. Knuckle Sandwich is a lenient Tyson map with high replay value. This is my third time through, so I'm trying to be extra aggressive. Those in the know can take this backdoor teleporter to a soul sphere and bushwhack the red keycard party, and if you've boxed well enough, you should have plenty of shells to polish off whatever you're afraid to get intimate with. This map is instant offense and gets better every time I play it. Grade A, difficulty D minus. Map three, lead poisoning, in which A2 Rob gives chain gunners a giant smooch. I've played this map before, so I get to benefit from the early secret blur sphere, but if you're not in the Machete fan club, lead poisoning starts off nasty. Corner cover is abundant, but the interconnectedness also favors the sneakier mouth breathers. Keep your head on a swivel. Ironically, the only fight that doesn't really work is the last one, which collapses into a huge ambush that you can just jog away from without a scratch. My disappointment is minuscule, and my day is just fine. Grade a minus, difficulty D plus. Map four, Funko Pop storage unit. It all started when a life-size Doom Guy Funko Pop came to life, broke out of its box, and started killing everybody. This map's title is definitely the most vivid thing about it. A2 Rob riffs on two famous warehouse maps, Vanguard's Craytastrophe and Scythe Map Four, tuning the difficulty closer to the second one. The ambushes are low-powered and pretty clearly telegraphed, and the secret backpack lets you lug around enough bullets to suppress anything the demons throw at you. It wouldn't be an A2 Rob wad without at least one instance of. Ophelia, but this map is otherwise pretty transitional. Grade B, difficulty D minus. Map five, <gasps> Gantlet. I once claimed that Doom 2's The Gantlet was about as memorable as doing the dishes, but that was dumb, because one immediately recognizes its influence on A2 Rob's Gantlet. The modernized chain gunner reservoir will tear you to pieces if you stand there and take it, but the closing imp and pinky Gantlet is food for your super shoddy. I appreciate that Gantlet expedites your cleanup of these imp snipers with barrels and crushers. They're exemplary countermeasures against monster window dressing. This episode was worth making just for all the times I got to say Gantlet. The rest is gravy. Grade B plus, difficulty D. Map six, hydraulic mating press. I think the word you're looking for is crusher. Hydraulic mating press goes through the motions in the first half, lining up low tiers on turf and popping chain gunners out of monster closets, but the red key unlocks an ominously empty pit just in time for Nito's guitar solo.
This is Machete's first bolt of real panic, and it totally hooked me. Taking a smush under the fast cycling juicer is more survivable than a goat group hug, so wade between the outpouring nights and don't get too comfortable. Every time I think I'm safe to wade out the flattening, still more Hell Knights come knocking at my cubby door. The mastermind at the exit is only slightly less of a prop than Doom 2 Map 6's mascot. Save your ammo, shoot the switches, and wait for the big crunch. Hydraulic mating press crushes it. Grade A, difficulty C. Map 7, Red Hot Reception. An unrepentant dead simple clone, and about as good as they get, Red Hot Reception sets the stage with a grim sight. Behold, the price of Hell's high delinquency rates. There are also a couple of dead marines in here, but that don't confront Machete Guy much. Those scum-ridden sacks of shit didn't even have the empathy to honorably discharge me. I was just told to shut up and get out. I bet they'd rather see me dead than holding a place in the marines again. I don't need help. I just need to wipe out the rest of these terrors and get rid of that awful noise. Incipient insanity notwithstanding, Machete Guy is the perfect man for the job. The Mancubus round can be reliably diffused by killing the fatzos in the corners to free up cover, but the Arachnotrons brought friends. Pretty smart, but then they are brains on stilts. A2 Rob gives you a glut of rockets and a secret plasma rifle with a handy hidey hole, so keep the trigger held down and enjoy the screams. Red Hot Reception's marriage of explosions and prosaic human things is a happy one. The set dressing compounds its entertainment value, and gives you something to grab onto. Grade A-, minus, difficulty C-. minus. Map 8, Dirty Pits. Starting out on a bronze corridor lined with snipers and mounted manks, Dirty Pits sets up a few tasty skirmishes for keycards and weapons before dunking you in a filthy silo where Machete's first cyber demon resides. There are no rad suits down here, so try to limit the number of trips you take through Brown Town. A bonus pack of skeletons spawns when you grab the yellow key. That gave me a bit of a scare after I retired Psy prematurely. Dirty Pits benefits from the staccato suspense of its gym midi from BTSX2, but my replays of it have felt more like rediscoveries. The lack of memorability doesn't diminish its fun factor, though. Grade B, difficulty B-. Map 9, that sinking feeling. Machete has a spooky side. That sinking feeling opens with a deceptively tricky pairing of Mancubi and Zombie Men. Working with just the rocket launcher can be tough to shake fireball triangulation and zombie patter simultaneously. The next two minutes are business as usual. Hit this switch, grab some rockets, head down the stairs, and... Oh. Making the water lower instantly, rather than with Doom's signature grinding sound, was a great choice. That sinking feeling gets more pronounced when demons start warping into the basin. The alcoves offer no protection. You may be feeling fragile if you couldn't unlock the map's lone green armor, but the best defense is a good offense, and you've got plenty of rockets. It's been a while since I've heard an original Doom MIDI use this effectively. Grade B+, difficulty C+. Map 10, Lords of War. Who doesn't like a worst-to-first story? Lords of War uses the same setup as Scythe's first episode ender. Load up on supplies, follow the arrow, and dethrone the demons downstairs without falling into lava. Thing is, Eric Alm's map had six monsters. A2 Rob's has 52. God damn, that's a lot of royalty. Admittedly, I have helped perpetuate the Baron of Hell's low reputation, but Lords of War makes an impassioned argument for their necessity. With a whole hellish parliament chucking green from the grandstands, this formation of pink bulldozers becomes a serious threat. Barons have a density advantage over their beige brethren. Hell Knights wilt under concentrated rocket fire, so you'd have to place too many of them for the player to move or keep spawning in more, which would have made the fight too mean or spammy. This is easily the toughest map in the episode, but it's a huge energy surge in a champion remake. Grade A, difficulty B+. Map 11, Feature Presentation. A play on this being a spiritual sequel to Scythe's Sneak Peek, Feature Presentation's fiery city block shootout also incorporates the exit structure from Doom 2's suburbs. There's a rocket launcher tucked away in the poisonous caverns at the start, but I found that only after backtracking in my third playthrough, so it's far from obligatory. With this innocuous movie theater fight at the end, Rob turns his map title into a double entendre. The archfile Usher is Machete's first. Ironically, Feature Presentation also serves as a sneak peek for TNT Devolution by way of James Paddock's extended remix of Into the Beast's Belly. Grade B+, plus, difficulty C. Map 12, Industrial Revolution. The Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for the human race. Alright, Machete Guy, that's enough. Cheery, freewheeling, and empowering are words I would not use to describe the Industrial Revolution, but Machete Map 12 is all three. It took me far too long to realize that Industrial Revolution is A2 Rob's remake of The Factory. You'd think the Arachnotron Sentry's Red Brick and number 12 slot would have given it away immediately.
immediately, but I'm me. Around this point in the megawad, the rocket launcher starts to compete with the SSG for the workhorse post because you get so many opportunities to splatter paint with explosives. Industrial Revolution's engine won't stall unless you miss the cue to jump to this switch, which releases the blue key. First timers might struggle with the red key crusher fight if they indulge it. Once you know where to find the escape button, it's a cinch. This is one of Machete's finest, a high-stepping sandbox shoot-em-up given a boost by Stewboy's Heartland MIDI. Grade A, difficulty C+. Map 13, Under Surveillance. The Bare Bones Under Surveillance defaults to Rob's two favorites, Concrete and Sheet Metal, while he focuses on making the title gimmick work. The spare, uncluttered layout gives the Helipad Queen less real estate to keep her beady little eyes on, but the only fight she complicated for me this time was the Cack Attack, mostly because I tried to stir up infighting. It didn't work. I think the switch that lowers the red key could telegraph its use more clearly, and the ambush in the water trough is a bit forced, but the nail-biter final fight sticks the landing. Two arch files will push you into a triple-barreled 3D monster printer packed with shotgunners. As you can see, the rocket launcher isn't the wisest choice, but sometimes making a suboptimal strategy work is more fun than doing it right. Grade B+, difficulty B-. Map 14, Alleyway Aneurysm. I think the title refers to what will happen if you take a left instead of a right at the beginning. The rocket launcher is surrounded by damaging muck and guarded by a million chain gunners, and if you flee to the armor and medikits, you'll wake up an arch file. The rest of this dense downtown reimagining is much more laid back. H.U. Rob's done this a few times now, but I like how he incorporates jumping into his pathfinding. To get the red key, you have to leap into the Mancubus firehouse, then get a running start to reach the flashing light that marks the drop into the sewer. You also have to hop to the Revenant-guarded yellow key tower, and you'll want to prepare the rocket launcher before taking the teleporter to this nasty dead-end mugging. Expect a couple of hoods to pop out of the walls when you pick up the blue key, and that's another alleyway aneurysm averted. Grade A-, minus, difficulty B. Map 15, Hardcore Harry. The title takes its name from Hardcore Henry, an action film shot from the first-person perspective of its protagonist. I've never seen it, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't reference the inmost dens, or rather, bloodbath. A2 Rob's impression of Eric Alm's impression of American McGee has two chaotic fights that you can dunk tank with a secret BFG. The empty blood yard brawl with the cyber demon would be harmless without the chain gun snipers, and the archfile bridge battle gets messy if you don't pounce on it, but you'll have a heavy backpack and ample space to retreat if you get in trouble. The utility panel by the regular exit opens a secret key. Use this switch and follow the candles to teleport to the path less traveled. This is the most neutral I've been about a machete map since level 4, and neutrality is the closest I will get to disliking a map in this megawad. Grade B, difficulty B. Map 31, Slayer. To be defeated by the evil marine, shoot at it until you die. Welcome to A2 Rob's elaborate reimagining of Scythe 2's infamous secret stage. It's a futuristic deathmatch map roamed by 18 turncoat doom guys. Thankfully, they're less aggressive than Eric's and can be killed in one good SSG blast, but you better believe I'm cracking open this rocket launcher and megasphere secret at the start. I'm out of practice at deathmatch, so pride will just get me killed. Any one of the keys will unlock the regular exit, but just like Scythe 2 map 31, you have to run an ungodly gantlet on a timer to make it to map 32 too legitimately. I gave it six attempts before concluding that it wasn't worth getting frustrated at a wad I love to prove a point. Another time, perhaps. Grade B+, plus, difficulty B. Map 32, running late. A2 Rob fully committed to the Scythe 2 secret map blueprint, taking the opener from his first wad and turning it up to 11. The outdoor fight from the standard map packs plenty of punch all by itself, so when you see that BFG, you know it's go time. When the shock of seeing these mighty heaps of monsters wears off, running late becomes quite amusing for its shameless excess and notice drop-off in detail. The original wasn't speed-mapped, after all. The Hell Knight Stampede in the Poison Drainage Zone can and should be stirred up with cyber cowboys and skinny ranch hands for one hell of a rodeo, and be prepared for arch files when you get home from the roundup. Overkill has its charm, and I like that this map essentially confirms the existence of an A2 Robiverse, but running late's huge tracts of land and downpours of monsters lack the tightness of Machete's best stuff. Grade B+, difficulty A-. Map 16, Rent Due. In today's hellish renting economy, nothing scares demons more than the end of the month. Well, except the sight of Machete Guy wriggling out of the sewer, arguing with the voices in his head. Bucket's paranoid midi portends catastrophe, so your heart rate should be climbing as you carve through demon dock workers. Kill the Revenant at the front desk, take his plasma rifle, and get ready to transform that tension into aggression. <laughs> A 
as plasma rifle fights go, this tenement massacre tops the charts. My god, what a rush. The plasma will always be my favorite panic weapon. Nothing says get off me like a long, loud pull on its trigger, and watching this swarm of creeps melt under a white-hot jet stream is the purest incarnation of that feeling. The Revenant and Hell Noble fight down the stretch is another outstanding plasma fiesta, but out here you'll have enough room to keep the palpitations to a minimum. Machete's midsection was listing ever so slightly, but Rent Dew grabs the wheel and writes the ship, just in time to guide us into the dark side of episode 2. Grade A-, minus, difficulty B. Map 17, Paper Cut. This is about as close as A2 Rob gets to remaking Scythe shot for shot. Paper Cut, as its title implies, shares a great deal of DNA with Book Lords, and while it functions well as a mood builder and thematic shift, the combat is pretty hushed. <laughs> get it? Because we're in a library. I'm sorry. I didn't take a hit in this recording until three minutes in, when a second pain elemental surprised me after I fled an obvious ambush. That's this map in a nutshell. Nothing is unexpected, and you're on the honor system to do most of these fights straight up. One measly archfile guards the door here, and one or two well-placed rockets could clear a path back indoors if you wanted to dip from the Revenant Rager. There's nothing unfun about Paper Cut, and I love its chilly transition at the end, but it's the first map to fall short of its scythe counterpart. Grade B, difficulty C+. Map 18, Abyss Inc. The dark turn machete middle episode takes has no precedent in Scythe or Doom 2. Eric Alm sent us to the future, but A2 Rob banishes us to a never-ending work week in purgatory. Despite its down-tempo midi and surrounding icy blackness, Abyss Inc.'s mundane little office space makes me grin, both for how comfortable demons always seem around microwaves and photocopiers, and for the fights set down here. You know where to tell Archie to shove his TPS reports, and this part where the walls come down to reveal cacos, revenants, and a pain elemental remixes the room nicely. The plaza's flatness offers these red-eyed commuters a lot of angles to shoot from, so there's no shame in a tactical retreat. Though you won't have that option in this mandatory pit fight. I kissed the first imp I saw with a rocket and still survived, so it's not too overwhelming. I've always liked Abyss Incorporated. It adds mystery to Machete's world, and I appreciate its white-collar black humor. Grade A-, minus, difficulty B-. Minus. Map 19, Mass Defect. Best experienced without a plan or a smidge of patience, Mass Defect's first two minutes absolutely light it up. Revenants spring out from every corner, mortar mancubi heave fire at friends and foes alike, specters roam the slime, and when you go for the yellow key, the Air Force rolls in. Take the pain for this hidden megasphere, snatch up the rocket launcher, and carpet bomb the lot of them. A2 Rob brings it home with a double-barreled archfile attack, followed by two doses of evil marines in their formal debut. They can't do much in this narrow corridor, but hey, it's supposed to be their tutorial phase. Mass Defect is a hell of an adrenal stimulant. Grade A, difficulty B. Map 20, Trademarked Science. Trademarked Science is Slaughter Jr. for the curious. It offers the tactile pleasure of pulverizing 264 imps and 100 cacodemons, and permits the player to increase the intensity to taste. You're free to run right to the switch at the far end, which releases the big bosses, then slip past everything and throw the caco switch to set off a firestorm that you will absolutely need the BFG and hard to find involved for. I polished off each round piecemeal here, which is the safer, albeit less exciting approach. Five red marines guard the exit, but they can only complicate matters as much as you allow them to. This is an easy map to like, and strangely much milder than Lords of War. Grade B+, difficulty C+. How you holding up, machete guy? I have reached the promised land. That underground base was starting to stir my head. It was too quiet. Meat, meat, rend the flesh. Embrace the cataclysm. Cool. Let's go. Map 21, holy heck. Oof. Talk about that sinking feeling. I haven't played Death since Dean of Doom Scythe 2 for good reason. Holy heck tips the scales against you less than Eric Alm's infamous Map 26, offering you health, shells, and an early plasma rifle if you're willing to knock out four revenants. A2 Rob mercifully omits archviles, but his evil marine is a wild card. He'll either die inadvertently defending you or zoom past everything and microwave your mug. To the delight of nearly no one, the Aphrod is back. That his health has been halved still doesn't compensate for how overpowered his attacks are. Like Paper Cut, I think Holy heck is a bit derivative, but I appreciate Rob sanitizing Alm's less sane decisions. The result is less memorable, but more enjoyable. Grade B, difficulty B. Map 22, Starophobia. That's fear of crucifixes. Even bolstered by this broken torch secret, I always find a way to get my clock cleaned by Starophobia. The two Aphrods marauding the hot canal can flay the megasphere from your back, but it's hard to focus on them under such heavy fire from Arachnos, Mancubi, Revenants, and all the rest. Quieting the first room secures you access
access to the Red Skull, and this lava fall leads to the two other keys. Don't take this teleporter until you're armored up and have a plasma rifle, because the ensuing archfile assault is a third-degree burn waiting to happen. I love it, but I'm the Doom equivalent of a kid who touches hot stovetops for kicks. I wish I liked the cyber rooftop fight where the encroaching cacos serve as a timer, but failing this kind of fight is frustrating, especially when fleeing and cheesing it is a viable alternative. More scorchers are on the way, folks. A2 Rob is just getting started. Grade B+, difficulty A-. Map 23, Crimson Waves. Essentially one big blowout fight with a twist, Crimson Waves starts with a suicidal infantry battalion charging face-first into cyberdemon howitzers. Once they break ranks, it's up to you to penetrate the stronghold, loose the cybers, survive a clash of the titans, and prepare for the final act. But before we get to that, what a cornucopia of references this map is. Count them. One, Death Spells was used in Scythe Map 22. Two, the pop-up Revenant Swarm is a mirror image of the one from Scythe Map 24. Three, the Blue Key Teleporter warps you to a parallel dimension a la Wormhole from TNT Evolution, which also links with this MIDI. And four, I can't help but associate the water and vine growth with Scythe 2's Jungle episode. You'd think by now I'd be immune to intimidation by Archvile Swarms and LA Sieben MIDIs, but this last fight still unnerves me. Grade A-, difficulty B+. Map 24, Castle Doctrine. I can't think of a reason why I should like this map. It's generic green marble and minimally detailed, sets most of its action on narrow parapets that meet at 90 degree angles, peppers you with sniping spiders, and shanks you with evil marines. But I still have a blast every time I boot up Castle Doctrine. It's like Courtyard from Plutonia if you had more space to move and weren't confined to four corners for cover. Rob mandates aggression without letting recklessness go unpunished, but he always offers leeway, escape options, and pick-me-ups afterwards. The rocket launcher is the key ingredient. This map would be a plot if you had to hack away with a super shoddy the whole time. This late plasma shootout puts a bow on one of Machete's unexpected gems. The gameplay in this megawad simply does not stutter. Grade A-, difficulty B. Map 25, Interloper. Elevated by one of Stuart Wren's most steadfast and dignified middies, Interloper is an infernal island assault operation that builds intensity as you clamber up its slopes. Three evil marines patrol the ocean of super lava surrounding the fort, so make quick work of them and blast your way through the pop-up ambushes until you reach the summit. A pair of Aphrits sneakily approach while you're preoccupied with the chaff at the top, so beware. Interloper's wide open layout cuts two ways. It gives you a lot of running room, but you can only take one path back to the center of the island, and flying monsters have free reign to pursue you. Luckily, A2 Rob offers you two juicy power-ups to defuse the last two fights. Save the invuln for this mess of barons and pain elementals, and you've got a megasphere to prep for or patch up from the last rush of Kakos, Hell Knights, and Revenants. I love Interloper's anticipatory feel, relatively gentle acceleration, and bright combat. Grade A-, difficulty B. Map 26, Demonic Real Estate. Demonic Real Estate can be cleanly divided into before and after you get the BFG. Before, you'll be scampering around the block looking for weapons, ducking your evil clone, and taking cover from Revenant and Chain Gun Fire. The dead end with the caged chain gunners might be the only room in Machete I consciously dislike due to the awkward angle you have to shoot them from if you don't want to be Tony montana but if you find this bullseye, A2 Rob completely makes it up to you. After you make the leap to the central structure and load up your super weapon, the walls come down and the battle of five armies begins. Revenants versus Hell Knights versus Floating Heads versus Aphrits versus you. Watch out for the Cyber guarding the exit megasphere, nuke the Aphrits ASAFP, and you should be able to coast to the finish line with some careful BFG blasts. Demonic Real Estate leans heavily on its final fight and resurgence midi for persistence of memory, but I'm telling you, every time I come back to one of these maps expecting to be impassive, it zaps me to life. Grade A-, difficulty B+. Map 27, Kingdom of Sorrow. What a strange and wonderful surprise. Not since Lost Civilization have I seen such an unexpected twist in a one-man megawatt. Kingdom of Sorrow is an ethereal BFG playground, where the objective is to climb three towers of revenants while avoiding cyberdemon rockets. The interplay between Zanzan Zawavea's uncategorizable midi, the magic water texture, the invisible candle bridges, and the zany gameplay would have been plenty distinctive, but the coup de gras is this Pac-Man super secret hidden in the damaging void. Waka waka, motherfuckers. Kingdom of Sorrow's aura lives in an uncanny valley between threatening and whimsical, and it makes a huge splash after six minutes maps of red rock and brimstone. It might not be Machete's signature map, but I'll still remember it years after I put this game down. Grade A, difficulty B. Map 28, Islands. Hell has begun to splinter. 
or maybe it's just Machete Guy's psyche tearing itself apart. In any case, the three maps leading up to Machete's closer are A2 Rob's most fragmented and experimental. Islands presents you with a triptych of unusual fights that you can take on in any order. The Kingdom of Sorrow reprise starts with a staircase of revenants, then releases four archfiles, two cybers, four afrits, and a baron brigade when you lower the yellow skull. This fight always bashes my brains in. The archfiles beg to be dealt with first, but I've gotten blown up so many times trying to erase them that I have to assume I'm doing something wrong. The other two fights are kinder and more inventive. Red Skull Island traps you between press boxes of archfiles and hell nobles, but you can close the blinds on the vials for a span of about seven rocket pumps. Better save your health, because an Aphrod is blocking the way out. Blue Skull Island is a pavilion surrounded by 20 damaged lava and respawning arachnotron turrets. Leave them alone and concentrate fire on the Baron clusters blocking two shootable switches. Each one summons four evil marines, who will paint the battlefield even greener. This fight is fun because it insists that you take damage. It sounds counterintuitive, but those who take the fire walk with me will experience liberation. Islands might lean a bit over much on its hallowed midi for atmosphere, but the rousing, surreal, and blistering fights speak for themselves. Grade A, difficulty A. Map 29, Paradise Lost. Hope you're ready for one last round of goosebumps. Paradise Lost is Hell's last-ditch effort to break your resolve, an eerie circuit of deja vu that, just like Scythe 2's backward glances, radically ramps up the difficulty. I want to like this map more. It's a cinematic recap of the Megawad that works better than both of Alm's Map 29, but Paradise Lost is twice as long as the average machete level and gets unavoidably bogged down in redundancy. These fights don't lack excitement, but shoehorning Scythe 2 exclusives and cyberdemons into them doesn't make them better either. My two favorite moments bookend the map. Seeing the idle archfile in map 1 turns my blood to ice, and the evil marine jump scare by the exit shatters the tension of the empty street. A2 Rob was onto something there. Imagine a cut of this map with hardly any monsters. Just you, Lee Jackson's MIDI, and your empty memories. I think if Paradise Lost leaned all the way towards horror, it might have been stronger than this incarnation, which drags on and dilutes its dread with violent intermissions. In the broader scheme of things, my quibble really doesn't matter. Grade B+, plus, difficulty A-. minus. Map 30, Seriously Doomed. What a daunting task it is to fill the shoes of fire and ice and haunting dreams. But here we are, locked and loaded, ready to face the multitudes again. So, what does Seriously Doomed have that those maps don't? The simple answer is time. 2023 marks 30 years of doom and 20 years of scythe. In 2003, Eric Alm borrowed You Suck from Rise of the Triad for his punishing final act, and in 2023, A2 Rob borrowed You Really Suck, composed for the Alien Vendetta midi pack by Lee Jackson himself for Seriously Doomed. It's fitting that Jackson transformed his game over theme into an anthem of bravery. For Doom's faithful, quitting is never an option. Regardless of your opinions on Scythe, Slaughter, or Aphrits, this map packs an emotional wallop when you realize that by playing it, you're joining Rob and reaching across a generation to the folks that came before us, players and mappers alike. Don't let your eyes get misty. You've got work to do. awe-inspiring Aphrit wave is thankfully easier to topple than Alms because the skyscrapers keep them from blowing away and they're individually flimsier. Hopefully the cybers soften them up a bit for you. Melt the last five marines beyond the blue door and you can teleport to Romero's office and watch Evil's stock price plummet. All I can say is, what a finish. Grade A, difficulty A. So, I have only one complaint with Machete. How come we don't get to use one? After de-hacking evil marines and afrits into the wad, changing the fist animation and sound effect would have been a walk in the park. For real though, I don't know if I would move a line def in this megawad. When people talk about the greatest designers of so-called slaughter-light combat, A2 Rob needs to be in the conversation. Machete floats like a cacodemon and stings like a BFG, holding its own against canonical favorites Valiant, Speed of Doom, Ancient Aliens, Vanguard, and the Scythes, while orbiting at a lower difficulty stratum than any of them. Further, 
Furthermore, I would argue that Machete's early maps are more entertaining and substantive than most of the warm-up material in those megawads, and it has the highest, lowest grade of any megawad I've reviewed on this show. Machete doesn't waste a single map slot, and I couldn't put it down. My final grade for Machete is an A. Difficulty-wise, it'll round out to a B-, which is higher than Scythe, but it should be noted that Machete's difficulty curve is significantly gentler, despite what it may have looked like on your screen. Now for my Dean's List. Valedictorian, Map 30, Seriously Doomed. Salutatorian is a tie between Map 12, Industrial Revolution, and Map 28, Islands. Class President, Map 28, Islands. And the dunce cap goes to, I just had to pick one, Map 4, Funko Pop Storage Unit. Machete is a very lengthy honor roll, so let me read it. Map 2, Knuckle Sandwich. Map 3, Lead Poisoning. Map 6, Hydraulic Mating Press. Map 7, Red Hot Reception. Map 10, Lords of War. Map 14, Alleyway Aneurysm. Map 16, Rent Due. Map 18, Abyss Inc. Map 19, Mass Defect. Map 23, Crimson Waves. Map 24, Castle Doctrine. Map 25, Interloper. Map 26, Demonic Real Estate. And Map 27, Kingdom of Sorrow. Thank you very much for watching, and please feel free to share your thoughts on the wand down below love to hear what you think, and I'll heart your comments to let you know I've read them. Now, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge my generous patrons. Aaron Allen, Agile Jackson, Agu XYZ, Alephany, Alex Topfer, Artisan Talzar, Bo Higginbotham, Beatbeard, Ben Barrett, Big Sai and his trusty Glock, Birdburn, Blexor, Builder Sith, Bitefire, Kappa Bitch, Captain Wave, Cheese Wheel, Christophine Place, Cram Salesman, Cutman Mike, Damo, Dan, Dario Romero, Delirium, Doot Yourself, Dorothy Miller, Eggboy, Emeljan, Emma Essex, Folkstorm, Francis T218, Galaquack, General Roasterock, Gothic Box, Griffin Upchurch, Hasamnas, Henners Lenners, Hexelix, Hot Tomato, Hyakcho, Idiot Supreme, In Captivity, Jeff Hibbert, Jimmy Paddock, John Averick, Jose Ballestero, Josh Ballard, Jude, just Some Schmuck, Just Great 98, Kill Plane, Quan, Large Cat, Lexi Max, Lucrenth, Lumnal, Mancubian Candidate, Maniac, Mark Rowland, Master Drew 117, Matthew Gower, McJimbles, Michael Akins, Miracle Water, Mixer, Moko Mothman MM47, Mosicon, Mr. Bob Cyndaquil, Myolden, Nafferty, Neurometry, Nick XCOM, Knights 108, Number 26, not Obelisk, NX Avery, Omnibot, Painful Hill 72, Pengerzan, Pezaveng Zhaj, Phantom Puff, Philip Coffee, Pyro She, Quibs, Red Doomed Earth, Reese, Reese Anderson, Richard Fry, Roadworks, Robbie Lyons, Rufy, Sega Monkey, Sean Grant, Sid Menon, Sir Lethbridge Doomer, Small Venom, Snacker Fork, Stone Mason, Stupid Nick, Sundries 66, Sunriser, Super Pecan Man, Sylvester Priss, Tara Kushino, That Guy Known as Will, The Fiery Charmeleon, The Freeman 500, The Sapphire Tri, TJG1289, Trilby Trillion, Turbine 2K5, Why Bemo Not a Crab, William Huber, and Wonkashack. Thank you. I appreciate you all very much. This is Mount Payne 27, and I'll see you in the next episode of Dean of Doom.